YouTube. Welcome back to another episode of D-Ski Grills. Today, we're going to spend some time talking about fire management and getting the right size logs for your smoker, okay? So this uh, video today is specific to the Workhorse Pits 1975, uh, but it also applies to any smoker that you may own, okay? The main thing behind cutting wood and making sure you have the right size is to make sure you get even temps, make sure that your smoke doesn't uh, become dirty, and make sure that it doesn't smolder, okay? So let me just give you a few examples before we get started. This log here is around eight inches in width but for my smokers, they need to be cut down to around four inches, okay? So we gotta split these in half. Now, what I have is a six ton log splitter, all right, by Southland. Uh, it has a 20 and a half inch capacity when it comes down to the length standpoint of it. But what we wanna do, and what I've been fortunate to do is find a wood person that has logs the correct length. If they're too long, anything over 20 and a half inches, I wouldn't be able to split them, all right? So I'm always looking, and if you can see from the stack, I was lucky enough to find a lot of pieces that are around the same length, all right? So I'm going to show you how we're going to get these logs chopped using this log splitter. And then all I do with these is I stack them up, okay? And then when I'm ready to start smoking, hey, I'm good to go. I don't have to worry about large pieces of wood that's going to cause issues during my cook when maintaining temperatures is so important to your final product, all right? So let's get into this right now. I'm sitting down because my knee hurts. I need to take a little pressure off of it today, all right? Okay, folks, so with the log splitter, we just wanna go right down the middle. That's what this is all about. I have it in place. And this particular log splitter, and probably other ones as well, they have a two-hand type safety, which is very important. If both hands have to be a part of the operation, you're a lot less likely to hurt yourself cut your hand, do anything like that because they're both on the machine itself, all right? So this machine has a green go button and it also has a toggle switch on the bottom here, okay? So all we're gonna do is push down the toggle and start the process. So, you know, you think about it, a lot of people uh, still do the manual thing uh, where they use axes and different things like that. Uh, but this here is so much easier. Look at that. Now we have two perfect splits. We have around four inches now with our overall length being around 14 inches. <sighs> Beautiful. This is gonna be another, another nice cut. Split them in half, and here's what you got. We're having a really good day with this today. I'm telling you, these are magnificent for what we're trying to get done, all right? So I'll get all these done. I'll put them back in my uh, wood holder where I store my wood to make sure it stays dry. Uh, I will show you the other style, which I believe many of you have seen. Let me grab it really quick. There is absolutely nothing wrong with these type splitters. It's just uh, more physical labor, right? So I'm taking the easy way out. I've been cutting a lot of wood lately and this baby here was a great investment to, to save my back, to save my arms and other things. But you can't go wrong with this too, okay? Now, we won't use it today, but it's no more than sticking your log right here, right? And then you would actually come with a mallet hit it and it would split right there all right so i do have that style if all else fails i can go back to that if i need to but this baby here is like a cadillac of log splitting okay we have more to cut but you can see our logs over here now we have a wonderful uniform type size and what we also have folks is as you cut you know you get little pieces right so it's more of the kindlin type stuff i'm talking about so you get small pieces of kindling that break as part of the splitting process. What I do with those is I keep them in a five gallon Home Depot bucket, any type of bucket will do. And what this does is this helps me get my fire started, okay? So these smaller pieces, they help you when you're starting to build up that coal bed, okay? So nothing goes to waste here. I'm hoping what I'm showing you will uh, give you a better understanding on fire management. Again, 
if you have different size logs, then you're going to get spikes and uh, dips in your temperatures. If your logs are pretty much uniformed and they're dry, then guess what? You're going to have a better chance of maintaining your temperatures. Okay, folks, so we've already split our wood down. We have the perfect size for that 1975 workhorse pits, right? So now it's all about getting the fire started. Now remember all of these wonderful treasures, okay? And that's these nice pieces of kindling that we have. We're gonna use those to help us get the fire started. So I'm grabbing just small pieces and there's some larger ones in here. We can use those as well, but I think the smaller ones definitely help you get that fire started and uh, get it blazing hot like you need it to be, okay? So we're gonna just lay some of those out. All right, that should be enough. Okay, so we have that in place. Now we're gonna come back with these awesome splits that we cut and we're just gonna lay them out, okay? Put one here. Get us another one on this side here. All right, I wanna come this way with one and we'll do one more. Campfire style. Now, when you're doing uh, cooks like this, you know, the most important thing is to get that cold bed started. That's another tip that helps you maintain your fire, helps you uh, control these even temps that you're going after, okay? So remember, we have our split size that we use for the grill. We have a whole lot more splits over here on this side. Don't know if you can see that based on uh, where I'm sitting, but there's more splits over there. And all we're gonna do now is go ahead and get this fired up. Okay. Tons of videos I've showed on this thing, but you're talking about convenience and helping you get your, your uh, charcoal or your wood, whatever it is you're using, lit. Can't beat this, okay? You just open up the valve and hit the trigger, okay? And we're ready to go. Now, the part that takes the longest when you're doing this is waiting for that cold bed, all right? So that's when the patience comes in. That's when you come out here, you get this started, then you go up and season whatever it is that you're gonna put on the smoker, all right? So I'm just gonna do two slabs of ribs. I won't be showing that cook, but I will let you see when it's time to put those ribs on, all right? But this is the most important part. This takes about an hour. You get your cold bed right, get your temperature set, then it's time to add the meat. So it's probably been about a minute, maybe a minute and a half, and we can go ahead and stop this right now, if I'm not mistaken. The smaller kindling should be lit, and it should do its job and start uh, igniting these larger logs. So let's kill this now. Look at that. We have a fire that is ready to go. All I'm gonna do now is just leave the doors open. We can close the door on the top part here of our cowboy grill type setup. All right. So we're just gonna let this keep rolling until it starts ashing over. Then I'll get back with you once we get to the point where we've built this coal bed. We can start checking to get our grill set up as far as the eternal temps. We're, look, we're looking for 225 to 250 today for this cook. And then we'll close this video out. I'll see you guys eh, about 30, 45 minutes. Folks, what I failed to mention while we're building this coal bed is that it's a good time to go ahead and start warming your logs, all right? So I'm gonna use the top of the firebox here, start laying our logs out so they can be heated up. And guess what? When it's time to add them to that coal bed, they will ignite immediately, ensuring uh, better chances of not having any dirty smoke, all right? So that's what we're doing here. Okay, we'll get back together in a bit. Okay, folks, so we're about 25 minutes in. I feel comfortable now. Our cold bed is coming along. We still have more time for it to break down, but everything has caught, okay? So you can see we have a nice, smooth fire going. All I wanna do now is close the door, okay? And go ahead and start warming this grill up, all right? So what I'm gonna do, I'll leave a crack about a quarter of an inch open is about where we're at right now. This baffle here, I'll just leave it closed right now. We don't need to open up the butterfly damper, all right? So this should be enough to go ahead and keep this burning and keep on building that cold bed. Okay, so here's what we got. We have our stack all the way open, as you can see. All right, we're gonna go ahead now and close our door. 
And with our fire uh, being calm like it is, just a nice blaze that's breaking down to that coal bed, we can start inching up on the temperature we want to cook our ribs, okay? Because that's what we're doing today. Again, 225 to 250 is what we're shooting for. So we'll let this continue going. This will start creeping up. And what you can check out over time is just how clean and clear the smoke is burning. Right now we have a light blue smoke. We don't have anything harsh uh, white smoke or dark smoke coming out of this beautiful grill, all right? This is being set up for success. And anyone who ends up tasting your barbecue is gonna know that you have pit master potential, all right? So we'll get back together when it's time to just add the ribs and close this video out. All right, folks, only about 10 minutes later and we are showing off our pit master skills right now, okay? Let me show you what we have on the dial really quick. Our top dial is reading 200 on this side. It is reading around 215 on this side. Our bottom, the one we're really concerned about right now, is showing 160 on this dial and about 160 on this dial. This is the one we're going for for today's cook. But you can see we're coasting up. We're still building our coal bed. We have wonderful smoke billowing out right now. Not 100% clear smoke, but beautiful blue smoke, okay? So still awesome, awesome results is what we got going on. Remember, we just cracked our door about a quarter of an inch um, open, right? So we know for a fact that we're getting the right draw. We're getting that air coming through, flowing through this beautiful grill and out this stack, all right? That's all we're looking for. Maybe 10 more minutes, I would say 15 max. It'll be time to add whatever protein it is that you're cooking for the day, but this is the way you get your grill fired up right. Okay, folks, it's time to bring this video to a close. We are sitting at 200 degrees on this side of the dial. We are sitting at 200 degrees exactly on this side, 250 on this one, and 255 on that one. We have everything managed. It's time to add these ribs, check out the smoke or lack thereof beautiful light blue smoke. It's time to open this up, add these ribs, and close this video out. So let's do that right now. Fire management. Fire management is what it's all about, all right? We have some beautiful seasoned St. Louis style ribs that I bought from Snake River Farms. I'm gonna set this midway on both of these slabs. All we gotta do now is close this, close this baby down and close this video out. If you like what we're doing, please subscribe to my channel. Let everyone know what Deesky Grills is up to. And as always, at Deesky Grills, grilling is not a pastime, it's a passion. Thank you for hanging in there with me for this fire management video. I hope it helped. Leave some comments in the description if you get a chance. Let me know what you think about it. If you like more how-to videos like this, I'll definitely bring them to you in 2023. Have a good day.